What's up guys, Canon here. On this episode we're talking about some badass aero bike and that will be Canyon Aero Bike. So we did already cover the ultimate and endurance range and today time for aero. Once more Canyon is uh, sort of playing here with the words aero and road. It really does fit well uh, because these are racing road bikes uh, aero optimized. Uh, now, but with the uh, all that Canyon knows about carbon fiber layup, they we should not expect that this bike will be only aero and not compliant, not uh, fast on climb climbs, because uh, all the racers um, I've been reading any reviews or some tests, uh, they say that they love the bike for everything, uh, uphills, descents, and of course uh, high speed. So this is something really, really exciting. Uh, and here Aero has only the CF SLX version, there is no non-SLX or the AL version, so only like really high-end top of the range uh, of the Aero bikes um, uh, by Canyon. Um, now many guys who did review on this one will tell you that this one will be much more uh, compliant than uh, any other bikes like for example Merida's um, Reactor or any other kind of aero bikes made, up, made by other manufacturers. Um, so really cool design. Uh, let's uh, compare the geometry first. Here is the geometry, let's just look at the geometry of the uh, aero. Uh, CFSLX and here we've got the geometry of the ultimate bike so that will be not as aero optimized and, um, and um, lighter uh, bike but you will see that there is difference in terms of the position that the bike is putting you into medium that would be for height between 178 to 184 so around six uh, feet tall guys uh, and let's just focus on these numbers. All right, so reach for the um, aero is 397, for the uh, ultimate is 391. So on the aero bike, we go six millimeters further. So there is six millimeters more uh, dist of a distance between the bottom bracket and the uh, head tube. So we go a bit further. And also the stack on the ultimate is 567 uh, and five. 51 on the uh, arrow so we go once more six millimeters to the front and 16 millimeters downwards so this one will will really put you into some uh, aggressive uh, aerodynamic position all about this bike is um, is just about being aerodynamic but they did, did not make any kind of crazy design with the brakes they have uh, those brakes that will be still aerodynamic and easy to maintain and adjust. So I like this approach really. Uh, they don't look like you know Star Wars uh, kind of you know, spaceship, but they just work and are uh, fine. Uh, this frame will be 200 grams heavier than the ultimate one. So we've got um, 780 for the medium uh, versus uh, sorry 980 versus 780 for the ultimate medium size. Uh, of course, there is some dedicated uh, Aeroblade SLX carbon fork with 114 fork shaft. So there is no tapered head tube here. It has to be Aero and it's just stiff enough. We've got also dedicated uh, cockpit, which is the H11. It's supposed to be saving 5.5 watts um, on the speed of 45 kilometers per hour. So it's of course on the paper. But uh, this integrated cockpit with uh, no additional bolts, uh, any pressure that, that uh, assembling uh, does between the stem and the handlebars is cool. And I do like it, so even a couple of watts here, extra watts here would be uh, great. By the way, 45 kilometers per hour, that's a lot. And uh, you don't often go for a long time uh, solo uh, on that speed, but still, on the Grand Tours like Tour de France and this bike is really hitting and winning stages there. It's, it does matter here. Then the seat post also um, uh, dedicated to this bike, it's uh, S27 and that's the only uh, VCLS system that um, Canyon is uh, say, telling us about. That's once more vertical uh, comfort and lateral stiffness. Uh, if we look at this uh, seat post, it's right here. 
a junction between, maybe not a junction, but the place where the um, top tube uh, and the seat tube ends and then the seat post uh, starts uh, is really nice looking, very aerodynamic and as you can see um, unlike on the ultimate bike which has the uh, bolt of the uh, seat, seat, uh, seat post clamp right here down here this one will be from the front on the top tube so completely uh, flat nothing that would uh, take some air or push against the air uh, on this bike once more as you can see brakes are just direct mount just these are uh, these are stronger than the, the normal standard calipers but nothing like hidden in the frame or something i do like this approach to to this thing uh, this uh, most expensive bike will weigh 6.7 kilo which is under 6.8 right the uci 6.8 uh, limit uh, and mm, the cheapest one which will still be quite expensive that's uh, 3300 3, euros will weigh just above 7 kilos so it will be here 7.2 kilos it's really not a lot as for the um, aerodynamic and quite compliant um, frame set remember that uh, all these bikes come with super duper wheels and wheels would, would cost or at least like 1000 something euros uh, or around just i don't know five thousand dollars so this matter a lot matters a lot is it worth it to buy a frame set in my opinion it, it's not because the frame set cost um, 2700 euros for both mechanical or the electric version but uh, you just just you just add like 1000 what 1000 and 300 and you've got wheels components and everything here you've got the frame seat post and the uh, the cockpit here so I think it's worth it to uh, pay a bit more this one is uh, cheaper because it doesn't have the integrated um, cockpit here but if we are going for the aero uh, model I would definitely like to have this one the aero cockpit integrated aero cockpit so cool bike and um, really fast uh, good for descents and uphills as well and many riders on grand tours love it and they are super fast so that's it about this bike please let us know if you have one of these how does it feel to ride on those and that's it for this episode thanks for watching and your thumbs up i will see you soon bye bye